is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro rolling in on our number three on a Friday. And I mentioned this earlier. You know, uh, I grew up with 90s alternative rock. And it's always great to see these guys still touring and going so strong. And the guys we have with us in studio right now, the guys from Our Lady Peace, Rain Maida and Steve Mazur. Now, uh, I started listening to these guys literally when I was like 13, 14 years old. They have a show tonight at The Joint. Uh, which is a great place to see a show at the Hard Rock, along with Bush and Live. We had Chad Taylor from Live uh, on the show this week. And uh, first of all, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here, man. It means a lot. Our pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Happy so to be here. You guys have to have some crazy Las Vegas stories, right? I mean, you guys have been playing here for years, right? And I know you guys have families and kids and all that sort I of stuff. I stopped gambling here. Did you used to gamble? Yeah, I thought I did. And then <laughs> we got stuck here on a tour. Oh, yeah. Like, something happened with one of the singers on the tour, and like all of a sudden the show was postponed. So we had three or four days here, which is not good for a rock band. <laughs> what's like <laughs> and the, it didn't go well. So. Like what, what's like so? What's like the crazy? Do you have like a story that maybe your fans don't know of something like you just you, you, you hung out in some weird bar somewhere or you, you, I don't know a strip club or I don't know anything that comes to mind that you could share with us? God, it's interesting because I, I live in Los Angeles, and so a lot of times friends. I grew up in Michigan. A lot of times friends are. Hey, let's meet in Vegas and this and that. So <laughs> right. I've done it a few times, but yeah. I don't really gamble and don't That's really, a good thing. I'm not really a club guy. So we come here and we're always like, so what do we do this and that? Yeah. So have found some very interesting alternative <laughs> ways of having fun in right. this town and some couple interesting nights. You guys yeah. decided to come on this show, so that's certainly a gamble in itself. So I appreciate All that. Right. Hopefully it pays off for you. But uh, very I'll, large risk. <laughs> so Rain, I want to talk a little bit about you know. Let's go back years ago when you were you were playing pizza parlors right in in, in Canada way back in the day, right? I did. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong. Like you have such a unique voice. You know, it's so unique and. and but back early in your career when you were trying to get a record deal, weren't there some people back way back in the day that didn't maybe didn't want to take a chance because it was your voice was so unique and so different? Did that happen back in the day? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I kept a few uh, rejection letters from, you know, record companies. So you still have those now? I do. I, I think my mom, my mom's got them in a box somewhere. That's awesome. Um, yeah, you know what? I think we were just kind of after the the 90s grunge thing happened mm -hmm. and it was it was definitely i think i was influenced by singers like bjork and tori amos and mike Patton. Mm. you know um and i don't know if that was like what was on point right then when we were getting a record deal but luckily sony kind of took a bit of a chance and i mean a bit of a chance we didn't get any kind of big record deal they gave us a little bit of money said we like what your demo sounds like go do a few more of those and we'll put it out and see if anything happens. And so. then boom, you know, Navid, Birdman, all those songs come out and you're almost, is it fair to say an instant success, certainly I, in Canada? I mean, no, I, w I wouldn't say that. I think really we put uh, a lot of miles on our first like touring. It was a little half school bus that we toured. We probably put 500,000 miles just going all over the U S and Canada and back mm -hmm. and did it again. And, and finally, by somewhere somewhere around the middle of it, I guess Robert Plant heard Starseed in his limousine in New York and was like, this is amazing. These guys need to come open for the new Page and Plant that had just started. And what is that like for you as an artist just getting started when somebody like Robert Plant listens to your music and says, oh, my God, these guys are unbelievable. They got a tour with us. For, for me, that's like if Howard Stern said, hey, this guy's got some talent on the – which he wouldn't, but if he did. Howard Stern, you know, he said, hey, this guy's got a lot of talent. You know, he should he should come on our show. I mean, that's to me, that's like I'd be jumping for – I'd be amazed, you know. And, I know. You think you would be. <laughs> and I wasn't. Why? I don't know. I think I, I was uh, – we were so into what we were doing, and we were finally getting to like – I don't even know if we were selling out clubs, but I remember we were at literally at um, – the Middle East in Boston, mm. playing there, and it was, like, packed. And right after the show, our tour manager came in and said, hey, we're not doing the next four dates. We're mm -hmm. going to open for Page Plan. I was like, what do you mean? Like, mm -hmm. these shows are amazing. Mm -hmm. I, it's not that I wasn't a Zeppelin fan, but I just felt like I don't want to do that. Right. That no, makes sense. No yeah. foresight, really, because mm -hmm. it was amazing. And yeah. meeting Robert Plant was incredible. But I find, like, the first 10 years of OLP for me, it's kind of a blur and probably missed up on a bunch of opportunities because I wasn't in the moment. I wasn't able to be in the moment. It was always like, mm. what's next? Where you were we so next? focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About new music, you know, where literally what the next city, how the show can get better, blah, blah, mm. blah. And so 
uh, I like where we're at now. It's like we just enjoy. You own your own music. You do your own thing. You don't have to worry with, about record yeah. labels. Nobody tells you what to do or what songs to write. You do it yourself. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. That's for huge. Sure. That's yeah, huge. that's that's big. The the kind of the liberation of of owning your own mm -hmm. masters is big, and and just being. I don't know if I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm definitely a Gladwell fan, but the ten thousand uh -huh. hour things I I get it. Right. But we're if it's true, we're there, and I think because of that, it's it's amazing to really enjoy those moments so you're you majored in criminology right what is the moment where you're in front of your family and, and you guys just say you know what i did it i made it this is what i want to do with my life we made it I, I forget about the criminology stuff i'm a professional musician and well, I criminology made it. is great for going in the music business just that, get that a lot of crime a lot of criminals yeah. in the music business yeah, yeah i get yeah. that <laughs> uh i don't i don't know i mean it took a long time my dad my dad came over from Italy when he was like eight years old, got in construction business. You know, he still thinks I'm probably going <laughs> to join his company at some point. <laughs> I love him to death. But, you know, I, I think it, it's really I, the cool thing about music is it's never it's never like, oh, we made it. Mm -hmm. I think you're just as an artist, you're still trying to push your own creative boundaries and trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to. Not never ever better a record, but you always mm -hmm. feel there's something better in you, mm -hmm. more authentic, better melodies, a yeah. better lyric. I don't know. It's just it's mm -hmm. always it's always out there. I think when that dies, then you're kind of dead as an artist. If you're listening to us right now, we're joined by the guys from Our Lady Peace, uh, Rain Maida and Steve Missouri. They have a show tonight at Hard Rock at the Joint, along with Bush and live uh you guys have sold more than two hundred thousand tickets on this tour did you think that this tour would be as popular as it has turned out to be because you guys added this las vegas date yeah i did i i just felt like um like people when you see the the bill it's mm -hmm. like why can you not go if you if you grew up in that in that moment this is even as a as a fan of music like you know we watched the bands almost you know at least a few songs if not their whole sets every night and you you just see the crowd. It's like they walk out of there after three hours and like, wow, I knew every song. And like, it's it's powerful. There's something very cohesive about all the music and the bands. And, and I think the biggest thing is, I can honestly say, we're all at like A level. Like everyone is mm -hmm. killing it on stage, which is amazing. No question, because I've seen this tour already in Costa Mesa. And it's, yeah. it's incredible. Uh, I remember watching you guys. I was lucky enough was to be Was that at, you at the front of the stage? That was and me. And I think I high-fived you. That was or me. Or like low-fived. I'm a super bump. fan. Yeah, that, that is me, sadly. And yes. now we're here? I spent a lot of money on those tickets, by the way. Really? For a radio guy. You yeah, I spent a lot of money. reached out. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. You get a free, few free tickets every night. <laughs> no, I specifically remember that show because it's weird. The stage is kind of... It's, it's really kind of, close. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're like a foot away. Yeah, that was a great and show, The stage man. isn't high. Yeah, it's you kind of freaked me out. Did you guys... There was like a fair outside there going on oh, and yeah. the, the food i had such horrible food it tasted oh, so good really? so bad for you though oh, yeah okay. fried everything okay. yeah, but that's yeah. why i'm not on the front of fitness magazine but anyway that's that another fair, by the way was incredible it was i, I went to the hotel to take a shower yeah. i come back and i'm like I couldn't find where the it's venue. Huge. I couldn't find where the venue was. <laughs> I call our tour manager. I'm like, okay, I'm by the Ferris wheel. Where am I? He goes, by the Ferris he goes wheel. go towards the Ferris wheel. But there were four Ferris wheels. It was like this like metropolis yeah. of a fair. It was very it's Orange County Fair. I got to ask you a question, Steve, because you were a fan of Our Lady Peace, yep. right? Uh, when they had another guitarist in there, you saw their shows as a fan. Yep. And through a friend, you become the lead guitar player for the band that you were a fan of. Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible story. Not many people in the world have a story like it's, that. It's not even like a one in a million. It's probably like a one in a billion <laughs> yeah, kind crazy. of thing. It's pretty yeah. incredible, yeah. That is pretty cool. Uh, and you've been with them for a long time now. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not the new guy anymore. No, not yeah. anymore. I was for a while. When you started with this band, I actually had hair. So yes, that that was a while ago. That, that was a long time ago. Okay, so so Ryan, let's let's talk a little bit about politics because you're you're not afraid to speak your mind a little bit, and I appreciate that about you. And then I want to get to some of the great charity work that you've done. Um, we talk about Donald Trump a lot on this show. You do. Uh, as a Canadian, what do Canadians in general? How do they feel about the political spectrum? What is going on in this country right now, and the divide that we have? I mean, it's funny. There's just been a bunch of debates in Canada because there's an election coming up in 10 days, basically. So to see the, um, I don't know, it's kind of like it, it, the the political culture has seeped into Canada. Like I watched, I was sitting at home in L.A. and just flipping the channels and I saw C-SPAN and it said Canadian debate. I was like, oh, my God. So they're, they're actually, I got to see some of it. And it was, it was so depressing. It was just a bunch of, you know, five candidates talking over each other, mm -hmm. yelling at each other, attacking each other. And I just felt like, you know what, if 
10 years ago, Canada had like this respectable decorum in politics and it was something you could maybe kind of uphold and, and feel like, okay, you know, we're going to pick the right person because you get to hear politics, you get to hear their, their policy. And, and I think now it's, it's, it's probably worse in America right now. And that's saying something. There's a lot of musicians that talk about politics in their music. Uh, Tom Morello is actually coming to town here in a little bit. Of course, his former band, uh, very political. Yep. Uh, Incubus is another band that comes to mind. They've ri- they wrote songs about George W. Bush before. And, and, uh, uh, how do you, f- you feel about that, by the way, about about put interjecting your political beliefs into your music? I mean, we've definitely taken some risks. You know, Wipe That Smile Off Your Face was a direct hit at, at the, the Bush kind of presidency, the whole Occupy movement. Mm-hmm. <coughs> we, uh, I just, I mean, we wrote a song for that, inspired by that. We all marched in different cities. It felt like, you know, yeah, shouldn't we all be for this cause, you know? Mm-hmm terms of you know equity and and that's kind of where we're, we're trying to get as a as a country as global citizens and then but we took some big hits from that i just heard the other day that uh and i didn't even know this but i guess you guys are probably protecting me but it's like we lost like half our facebook followers did you really did that occupy thing yeah so do you regret uh that when, when something like that happens or do you say to yourself listen i'm gonna stay true to who i am we hope we keep our fans we hope they don't take it personal because a friend of mine, who you probably guys, the band Filter, a friend of mine, Richard, yeah. Richard Patrick, he is very political. You won't find a guy more liberal than Richard Patrick. Right. And he just goes off on social media every day. In fact, some of his shows were canceled because of his political beliefs. Sure. He also had the Make, Amer- Make America Hate Again tour. That's correct. That's the, that was what the That'll name do it. Which is about as good as you yeah. can get. So that's, it's interesting, though, isn't it? Because yeah. you have to be careful. That's with ballsy, man. Yeah. That's, that's aggressive, right? Good for him. And he's actually coming to town in a, in a few weeks also. Mm. But but you have to be careful. We're actually playing a show with them on this tour. Yeah, there's one, oh, there's a Corpus that. Christi show where it's just live, that. us, and Filter. I did, uh, Richard's a good friend of mine. He's a great guy. He's a little crazy, but he's, okay. he's a good well, dude. Well, hopefully I get him Make <laughs> America Hate Again. Huh? <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna buy him some Donald Trump toilet paper uh, as a gift when I see him in a few weeks. I think, I think he would enjoy I that. I think that's a great Look, idea. You know, the thing with politics is, I think the, it's not, it's not even politics. The problem is if you follow this trail of breadcrumbs back to, I don't know, probably um, Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. Like that's when, when reality TV started, and we started making these people famous. Mm-hmm. This is what we get now. And that's, by the way, that's one of their songs, Stop Making Stupid People Famous. I love the title of that song, by yeah. the way. I and hope you're talking about the Kardashians, because that's how I feel. Well, it's, <laughs> it, we're just talking We're talking about the culture. And, like, literally, yeah. if, like I said, if you follow, and maybe there's someone before, but if you follow all those people that came after mm-hmm. Paris, and and that's why we have Donald Trump in, in a position where he was able to become president now. And even going back to music with what you're talking about, reality TV, don't you think that kind of ruined music to a sense with MTV? They don't even play music videos anymore. Like, I remember back in the day when they had MTV Unplugged, right? Uh, Live, the band you're touring with now, their Unplugged was insane. It was unbelievable. And I love it when you guys play acoustic, too, because I think, you know, you can really see how talented a band is when, when they can play a hard rock song and play it acoustic. But, you know... They went to the Carson Daly era or the Paris Hilton era of yeah. reality TV. What the hell is going on? I don't even watch MTV anymore. That, I remember the good old days in the 90s when grunge rock was all over MTV and Matt Pinfield, is that his name, the 120-minute show? Yeah. You guys yeah, were probably yeah. on that show. I mean, Love Matt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what happened to alternative rock, you know, in that sense where it just isn't played mainstream on MTV anymore at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, everybody just wants, look, it's a tribute to you guys and the show you guys have here. It's it's mm-hmm. long form. You get to talk for more than three minutes. It's not yes. just about sound. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. not just about sound bites, but that's that's kind of where our, I'm sure if you'd see our brains, they've all changed because we're all on these devices and everyone is just like, it's all fast food, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Again, if you're just joining us, uh, our, <laughs> you're right. It is uh, Our Lady Peace in the studio, Rain Maida and Steve Mazur and... Uh, you know they're doing a great show tonight at the Hard I mean, Rock. I, at the I joint. blame I blame Jersey Shore in the situation. That that's all I blame. <laughs> so so Sitch. as as a as a Canadian citizen, what what are your thoughts on Justin Trudeau? Are you happy with him so far? Yeah, I mean, I think you know I, I'm I'm definitely lean that way. Um, I think there's been um, huge progress in terms of. You know, it's funny. I always judge it by it's like when someone takes a picture in the whatever the Oval Office or where the, you know, uh, I don't know what it's called in Canada. That's embarrassing. But, like, when you when you see the people that are making the policy with Justin, it's been like, oh, now there's, like, 
diversity. There's more women in 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 uh, in the in the in the government now, and I think that alone, if that's all he did, that that's like that's progress, right? That's that's huge progress. So, um, not to get into the minutia of his policy, which I'm probably not the best person to do, but there has been a you know there's been a lot of of, of important policy that he that he's pushed through. He gets pushed back on some other things, the pipeline, obviously, um, but. Politics is a rough game, man. You're never going to please anyone. And so um, I, I look for, you know, when you talk about charitable work, mm-hmm. it's all about transparency. And and if you think that person is transparent, then they're probably worth a vote. I agree with that, actually. I've always said if you've lived your on life. On either side. Yeah. Even, I, and I will say that on either side. I think if you've lived your life recklessly, you're probably going to be a reckless president. That's kind of always been my opinion on that. But you mentioned your charity work, and I, I really want to talk to you about that. Uh, War Child, that's been a big part of what you've done. Uh, building schools for kids. I mean, you, you've been involved in so many things that have helped so many young kids. I don't think I don't think people like, uh, there's a lot of casual Our Lady Peace fans that may not know that about you. Because Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's just something you know. I remember seeing Peter Gabriel back in the day. I was I was Legend. young. Yeah, and and walking out and is like I was given a Greenpeace sticker and I signed up for Amnesty, not really understanding. And then all of a sudden you start getting emails and you you know you get on their on their mailing list and stuff. And and it's just it was amazing that Gabriel was able during the show to talk about even politics a bit, but you know, definitely he's human- his causes, humanitarian causes. And I never felt like I was being preached to. And I think mm-hmm. that's always really kind of the, the danger, right? It's like, I hate when I see an artist just preaching. It's like, come on, man. I've probably been that ass many times in my life, but you just try to walk that fence and end up on the right side. And, um, you know, being earnest, it comes with that danger, I guess. But at the end of the day, it really is. It's like I said, when we were able to to meet the founders of War Child, literally see like where and track where every penny went, and I felt that was that was pretty amazing. And the first trip we took to Iraq, I remember driving in from Jordan, and we saw all these incredible, beautiful white Range Rovers, and so you start learning about the business of charity, really, mm-hmm. right? And it was. You know, they make so much money. They spend so much money on marketing, like 50, 60 percent. Mm-hmm. And that means everyone gets new trucks. Everyone gets new computers. And I'm sure it's changed a little bit since wow. then. But um, with War Child, it was always about, no, like 98 cents of every dollar is going to a program. And, and I really so respected that. Isn't that so important, Rain? Because, you know, I, at least the way I feel with some charities, you don't know. You mentioned you don't know. You every can't track cent. It. Where's yeah. every cent going? But yet with this, so how do people get involved if people want to donate? How can people get involved with that? Warchild.ca or warchild.usa. Mm-hmm. They run both chapters, U.S. and Canada. And they literally have, um, if you go on their site, you see all the programs. Um, mm-hmm. When you donate, it can mm-hmm. go to a certain program, maybe that you mm-hmm. you you are... are you know, for whatever reason, wanted to go to. And I, again, like it sounds like a cliche at this point, but they are completely awesome. transparent. It's amazing work you're doing, man. Really appreciate it. It's not me. I'm like, by f- I know. You're a part of it. I'm Monday morning quarterback. At you're a part of it. Best. <laughs> I get up and I grab you're, a guitar. You're too much. These people get up and try to save lives. Well, there's a lot of people that grab guitars that don't do the good work that you're doing. I will mm-hmm. say that. Um, okay, so we only got about a minute left to go here, guys. For somebody that has never seen an Our Lady Peace show before, and obviously I'm not one of those people. I've seen you guys plenty of times. Thinking about going to the show tonight, checking out you guys, Bush and Live at the Joint at the Hard Rock. Give me a brief synopsis. Uh, what can people expect if they're thinking about checking out the show tonight? Come on, Steve. This Go is ahead, a, this Steve. is a sound This is moment. your chance to this rise of all three bands. And, and Steve, well, absolutely. I, talk to me here. I've never act. I'm one of those people he just. Described. Are you coming tonight? <laughs> I am coming tonight. You're like no, we both are. Oh, I'm bringing a date tonight. Of course, I'm going. Well, I will say <laughs> that that you know maybe on a lot of these kind of tours, bands are out there doing it for the money. Like everybody seems, no one's phoning it in for sure. Like I was like, wow, everyone is like. Mm-hmm. Killing it, all three. It's an emotional assault of the senses. That's perfect. I love it. I love it. That's a great way to explain it. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We're looking forward to the live performance here in a few minutes, but it really is an honor to have you guys in studio, and we'd love to have you on again sometime. Thank you so much for being here, man. Pleasure, man. I really appreciate it. See you tomorrow. There you go. It is the guys from it is the guys from Our Lady Peace. Uh, a lot of fun. All right, so uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to be uh, replaying a segment. If you missed it, uh, a poker scandal that is all over the world right now, a cheating poker scandal. And we're going to have Matt Berkey, who's a specialist, talk about this when we come back. All right, we'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDON. This is The Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Come on, guys!